I shop for a living. I am the mother of two girls, a vintage model, hair and makeup artist, fashion influencer, and personal stylist. At times, I am the host of elaborately themed parties, <laughs> creative director, and costume designer. I spend my days creating looks, wardrobes, and spaces that inspire and build confidence in others. Shopping is a thread that feeds my creative purpose. To me, it's not just the practical acquisition of things, but a treasure hunt for the magical pieces that fulfill a vision. But shopping can come with a hefty price tag, and I don't just mean to bank accounts. When I was a young girl, my seamstress mother had this long, clear plastic bag full of fabric scraps. I loved it because I could see the piece I wanted and reach to retrieve my treasure. I spent hours using these pieces of cloth to wrap, tie, and stitch all sorts of fashions onto my Barbies. To me, they weren't scraps, but the future ball gown of my doll. I learned at an early age to not see a thing for merely what it is, but for what it could become. These creations took effort and heart, but they were mine, and I loved them. I'm the youngest of seven and wore many hand-me-downs. So as a teenager, when I needed to make my own decisions, I started going to the thrift store. This was a great, cheap way of spending a Saturday afternoon with my friends and our babysitting dollars. There was always a sense of adventure walking in, because you didn't know what treasures you were going to find. I bought Levi's from the men's section, cut them off into shorts, washed them over and over again to get that perfect frayed edge. Those shorts took some time, but man, I was so proud of those. I wore them with tights and the used combat boots I got at the Army surplus store. I still have those boots. Because I had to go back to Army surplus for months before they finally had a pair small enough to fit my tiny feet. And by then, they weren't just boots. They were precious treasure. And people don't throw away treasure. These second-hand finds took effort and heart, but they are mine and I loved them. Perhaps you were once like this too, a creative problem solver, figuring out your own version of cool. Are you still that person? Somewhere along the way, we lose the fun of thrifting as we get older. We earn some extra money to spend at the mall instead. We get a higher education that teaches us how to make a living, but we forget how to make fun things. Perhaps now you think it's not hygienic to buy secondhand. Did your priorities change? Do you think that thrifting is something you do only when you can't afford to buy new things? Did you move up the social ladder and can't go back down to the first rung? Now we live in a digital age where if you tap the right spots on a screen, shoes arrive at your door the next day. We've become so used to shopping with our thumbs that we no longer shop with our hearts. I mean, don't get me wrong, I appreciate convenience. Paying bills and my bathrobe will never get old. <laughs> but we consume things with so little effort now, they're not treasures anymore. It's just meaningless stuff so easily discarded. Like that shirt you got online that wasn't nearly as nice in person as its picture. But it's not terrible, and it was a really great deal. So you'll wear it once to justify your purchase. And then it sits, unused, until the next closet purge. Wasted money, wasted time, wasted resources. If we do go shopping in person, it looks more like throwing a pair of pants into the cart next to the cauliflower and the cookies. <laughs> or we're faced with the fast fashion giants and their revolving door of must-have, underpriced trends that convince us we already need to replace the thing we were lured into buying the last time. These shopping practices leave us feeling like the clothing we buy is unimportant and disposable. Did you know that North Americans are buying five times more clothing than we did in the 1980s? These numbers would suggest we never look into our closets today and say, oh, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> Did you know that from farming the cotton to finished product, 
It takes 2,700 liters of water to make one cotton t-shirt. That's the amount of water a person should drink in three years. How many cotton t-shirts are in your closet? How many cotton t-shirts have ever been in your closet? Did you know that it takes 6,800 liters of water to make one pair of jeans? That's more than 100 of your morning showers for one pair. Next time you go to the mall, I want you to imagine everything is dripping water like a leaky faucet. Drip, 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 everywhere you turn. Then imagine they will continue to drip for the lifespan of their use. They're dripping in your closet. You're leaving a puddle behind you everywhere you walk. Picture this, and you'll get the same sinking feeling that I do. Did you know that thousands of garment workers have lost their lives or are living in ill health due to dirty and unethical manufacturing standards? With these and so many more staggering statistics that I haven't even mentioned, it's not a surprise that the fashion industry is the world's worst polluter, second only to the oil industry. Our clothes are costing the planet so much more than we are paying for them. So what do we do to reduce our impact of overconsumption? Let's go back to teenage me and my thrifted cut-off shorts. I, too, got distracted by the gleam of shiny new things as I got older, but I never really lost the fun and adventure that comes with thrifting. Now, as an adult who can afford to buy new things, I've come to realize that our world is so jam-packed full of everything you could possibly need, buying brand new often isn't a necessity. Whatever it is that I'm lacking, somebody else is donating to the thrift store. So these things can serve much longer in a new home, in my home. The thrift store is, in fact, the most exciting and diverse department store in existence. I mean, where else could you find? Sorry, silks, for when your decor needs a splash of color. Scarves in all colors and patterns you can imagine. Cocktail dresses for every one of your events. Tablecloths, all sorts and types. The damask ones are my favorite. Jewelry, from delicates to large statement pieces. Home decor, like vases and candelabra. Excellent vintage, including hats. <laughs> Sequins on anything and everything. And my new favorite thing to find at the thrift store are really gorgeous tea sets. Oh, how nice. We're ready for a party. Cheers. <laughs> Throughout my life, the thrift store has let me flex that creative muscle of not seeing a thing for what it is, but for what it could become. Like taking an incredibly large navy curtain and turning it into the magical sky ceiling at my daughter's Hogwarts party. We've taken toy pistols and various doodads and turned it into the coolest steampunk arsenal for another party. I flex that same creative muscle for costumes. These costumes did not come from a package. They're completely unique, made with a bit of ingenuity, but they're mine, and I love them. Now, the thrift store isn't just about playing dress-up and parties. You can find extremely practical things, like an air mattress for my daughter's sleepovers, including the cordless air pump. You can find rollerblades, my favorite cast iron pan, and storage solutions, like my treasure chest. Thank you, girls.
Buying secondhand makes so much practical sense. Why isn't everybody doing it? Well, here's one. I don't have time to go waste wandering around the thrift store. There's too much stuff in there, and it overwhelms me. OK. Well, the next time you have a purchase in mind, like a lamp for your living room or a new spring jacket, just start your shopping adventure at a thrift store. Having a goal in mind means you're not wandering aimlessly, unsure of where to start. Don't find what you need? No big deal. Move on to the next store. But at least you tried. Do this over and over again at the same thrift store so you get to know where everything is, like when you're grocery shopping. Less overwhelm, more treasure hunt. Or I hear, there's nothing in there that fits me. Everything's just old and dirty. Well, have you ever donated something to the thrift store? If you haven't, please do. <laughs> have you ever donated something that's gorgeous, but it never fit quite right? Or the color puts you off? Or simply because it doesn't spark joy? <laughs> well, other people have donated those things, too. People your size and your size. People with your taste. The labels, the trends, the treasures are all there for the taking. But only if you go. And you know how great it feels when someone compliments you on your outfit? It's even better when you get to say, thanks. This dress was $8. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I also hear, I can't find treasures, Monique. I'm not creative like you. But there is creativity in you. Remember using your imagination and how much fun that was? You've got to flex those creative muscles. You can do this. So spend an afternoon at a thrift, vintage consignment store with your friends and your family. It's all there from the mundane to the magical. Consider it your treasure chest of possibilities for your life. My dream is that the garment industry will clean up its act because consumers like me and you have decided to stop shopping with our thumbs and start shopping with our hearts. My hope is that my kids and their kids will continue to enjoy a world with clean water, a planet of people who consider their global impact in their everyday actions. Remember, we're not doing this because we can't afford new things. We're doing this because the planet can't afford new things.